What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're playing Geist of St. Traft in Historic Brawl. Geist of St. Traft is a 3 mana Azorius Spirit Cleric 2-2. It has Hexproof, which is big. Whenever Geist of St. Traft attacks, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking. Exile that token to the end of combat. So, we're playing a Voltron deck. Geist is a great Voltron commander candidate because it, it already has hexproof and it creates an additional evasive creature when it attacks which is the flying 4-4 four four. Um, so our goal is to essentially attach all of these really low mana curve uh, auras and um, equipments to guys to give it flying to make it unblockable give it double strike give it you know lifelink and essentially beat down our opponents before they can do anything. Um, we have a couple in-game payoffs, but really the way the deck is constructed is to just keep attaching equipments to it, make this creature huge, make it, um, you know, evasive so they can't block it, and just uh, beat them into submission. Again, because it's hexproof, the opponent usually can't interact with this. A lot of the decks... They're running targeted removal of a bunch of different kinds, but the typical targeted removal, like, you know, black removal spells or white removal spells like Swords to Plowshares, or uh, enchantment removal like uh, Touch the Spirit Realm, um, Borrowed Time, uh, or they have, you know, um, like enchantments that turn off your commander like they say it, it becomes a one one with no abilities or things like that well none of that works against guys because it's hexproof all of those effects are targeted so the only way to get rid of this is with a board wipe um or a non-targeted removal source like a target player sacrifices a creature those types of things so um it's really hard to interact with and unless they have exactly the right cards um we're going to be able to keep it on the battlefield and keep punishing them. Uh, then game payoffs are just two MDFT, uh, MDFCs. Excuse me. Um, so Seagate Restoration, draw a bunch of cards. Emirator's Call, make some more angels. Make our creatures indestructible. We can make two Geists with Spark Double. Um, and then Archon of Sun's Grace creates two twos every time we play an enchantment. So this is just a way to make the board wide if we need to. But otherwise, it's pretty much what we talked about. Typical mana base, nothing really to point out here. Just a couple scry lands and draw lands. But it's all just, you know, Azorius colors with some mana fixing with the new um, fetches. So let's get into the matches, see if we can actually get some wins with this deck. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button. I've been uh, coming out with a video every day, different kind of historic brawl deck, commander content. that subscribe button if you like that kind of stuff also if you've been watching me and you haven't subscribed yet come on what's up with that hit that subscribe button if you keep coming back you might as well subscribe I'm curious who we're gonna play against cuz uh, Joda okay all right I never see this um, I never see guys to St. Traff in the queue like I never play against it I know it's it's a somewhat popular commander, but I never ever see it, so I just I'm not sure what tier we're in, but Joda's very good. So we got both our colors. We can give it flying as well. Okay, we'll keep. We'll just, we don't have anything to play with this, but we'll just put some stops and make it, make it seem like we do. Okay, cool. I actually have something to do with my mana. 1-1 one, one Double Striker. We really want them to kill this, though, so we can get the backside of it. 
which is a um, enchantment that gives our creature double strike. Land? Yes! Oh, so perfect. Give it the double striker. I don't think this deck runs Wraths. I mean, they may have like Urza's Ruinous Blast, but that won't affect uh, Geist of St. Treff because it's legendary. That's a, it's like a five mana um, destroy or maybe it's exile all non-legendary permanents. Non, Non-land, non-legendary permanents, something like that. Okay, so with no board, we probably want to give uh, lifelink if we have it. Flying. Flying. Okay. So we'll do Sentinel's Eyes first. And we'll keep up memory laps for when they because they're gonna play Joda. No, maybe not. Well, it, that's okay. What does this do? Yeah, okay, so they mana fix. Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict. Destroy all creatures. Well, we can memory lapse that. Oh, it can't be countered, huh? Nope, we can't do that. Okay, resolve. Well, they had it. Uh, they run a wrath in their... In their... Um, Legendary Matters deck, which is kind of surprising. Um, we'll just do this to draw a card. Kind of awkward, but... We need to get to... We need to get to another land. At least we have a way to counter Joda. Yeah, because they're going to play this, and they still have five mana... Why wouldn't they slam Joda? Right? Okay. Run and Realm Breaker. Um. Put that back on top of your deck. Okay, we're just gonna keep playing the counterspell game. Didn't expect them to have planeswalkers. That's for sure. Definitely didn't expect that. Land? Yes. So they're probably going to play Joda because the defenses are down. Okay. Do you have a one mana? You do. Okay. Oh, that's really good against us, too. Because it makes uh, permanence lose hexproof. Yeah, it's pretty good. No block. So, what do we do next turn?
Okay, so they basically have to kill us next turn if we do it like this, right? So this will give it flying. We could keep a counter up just in case. We could give it... So one, two, three, give it double strike. Definitely give it double strike. Give it flying. We'll give it ward one. I think that does it, right? Isn't that six? No, that's 12. Never mind. Very close. <laughs> Double strike and drawing a card work very well together. So they, they either have to kill me or they have to get rid of Geist somehow. They have the Shadow Spear. So they're going to try to draw... Or they're going to scry, rather. Scry and draw. Okay. Clissa. Does it do it? I don't think. Or does it? I think it just barely doesn't. Or does it? Oh, is that exactly 20? I think that's exactly 20, because I think this pumps itself. No, no it's not. Oh, for some reason I thought this doubled its power. But they did gain a ton of life. Okay. So, Sentinel's Eyes. Right? Exile 2. Okay. I don't know if this does it. I think it does. I think it does. That's a chunky boy. Boom. Draw a card. Just BMing, BMing all over the opponent. They gave me a good game though, so. They're a good sport. <sighs> that was close. But you could see, you could see how like, if they didn't have that Supreme Verdict early in the game, we would have won before then. But yeah, man, that was close. So, <laughs> did not expect the Supreme Verdict in the Legendary Matters Jota deck, but <laughs> They had it early. They must have... I, I, didn't, I don't remember if they mulliganed or not, but they either had it in their opening hand or they mulliganed into it. Which was smart on their part, because that's really the only interaction their deck probably had. And they did They did uh, cascade into the... Um, I forget the name of the equipment, but it turns off Hexproof. Shadow Spear turns off Hexproof. So if they did hit like a, like a Shieldred... No, Shieldred would do it without the Hexproof. If they did hit, like, a some type of legendary creature that, like, targets, you know, and does damage or something. I can't think of any, but I'm sure they exist. Destroys a creature on ETB or something like that. Then they, they could have cascaded into that. But besides Supreme Verdict, that was probably the only spell in their deck that would actually interact with our creature. Let's see what we get next. Selfless Paladin. I think this is the one Nadar that makes a bunch of 1-1s? One no. Oh, this is the Enter the Dungeon one. Enters the battlefield attacks. Venture into the dungeon. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 as long as you've completed the dungeon. Okay. 
All right. They're mono white, so they're going to have targeted removal. I don't know if they're going to have board wipes, though. We can give it flying, so we're going to keep double strike. Yeah, I mean, this, this is good. The only problem is that we don't have any white mana. So... That's a bummer. So I think we got a mulligan. Okay. To tap sources, but... Uh, we can draw a card with this, so if we get desperate, we can do that. Nice. Okay, so then... We have to have a legendary creature, otherwise this comes into play tap. So I guess it doesn't matter. Since we have miscast, we might as well put the blue source down. And run it like this. It's nice that we got a land off the top. This deck doesn't have, like, a small amount of lands, but it's a little less than I normally run. I think it's, like, 38 or 36, something like that. Let's do it like this. They're probably just going to play their commander, but just in case they don't, I miscast them. So they enter the dungeon. Which dungeon are they doing? Scry one, make a treasure or a goblin, I guess. We lose one life. So maybe they're trying to speed run through this. Make me lose life and draw a card. Um, yeah, I think we just get Geist down. Gonna be really hard for them. <laughs> they're reading the card. What the hell is this? Um, so yeah, they get to. I don't know what they choose. I guess make a treasure. Yeah, no blocks. Okay, that's fine. Can you even give life link. Oh, we could turn off their commander. That's tempting. Okay, so we could... Can't attack or block. Yeah. Do they have Ephemerate? You thought you would get away with that. Six damage to your face? Okay, fair enough. But at least we at least we got rid of their ephemerate and the rebound trigger from ephemerate. Okay, well I don't think they're gonna have mana tithe in their deck, but we'll just name Spirit. Just in case. You never know. Okay. So. Flying and plus two plus two seems pretty good. Can we play the back side of this? Okay. Giving it vigilance will allow us to block their creature. We'll do curiosity next turn so we can start drawing some cards. So they have some blockers. They have some blockers. It's pretty good. None of this does anything. We can 
scry with Castle Vantress. I think we just do this and prevent their commander from attacking. So, yeah, might as well suit it up. And draw a card by doing this. It's redundant, it just gives it flying, but we'll take the cards. So if we attack, they just block. So... Yeah, no attacks. So we'll just block their commander. Are you sure you... Oh, they're vigilant, I see. I was like, are you sure you want to attack with your... Yeah, we'll just do it like that. So they're going to pump it and give it first strike. Yeah, that does it. That does it. I think we'll just good game them. They figured it out. Good for them. It's a tough, it's a tough puzzle to solve. But they figured it out. Yeah, we didn't have anything in our hand that was going to help us with the angels. That's unfortunate. I don't really know how their deck's supposed to work, though. Um, the, like, enter the dungeon deck? I don't... I know there's the black one that has, like, the infinite combo enter the dungeon, but I don't know if there's a mono-white, like, infinite combo enter the dungeon where you, like, cycle through all the dungeons a bunch of times. That one seems like the... like the really painstakingly slow way to do it. Maybe you just use, like, Ephemerate and bounce spells and... you can... gain enough value. See who we get next. If uh, Arena wants to figure that out, that'd be cool. There we go. <laughs> Light pause. Okay, so basically the same kind of deck that we are. So we need to get. We need to get an effect that. Like a. Um, one of our enchantments that turn off creatures. Uh, this has all of our stuff in it. But Light Pause is... Light Pause is an even better... Wow, they just scooped. Light Pause is an even better version of what our deck does. It's like built to be an aura uh, commander. So, whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura. So basically, every time you cast a aura, you get to tutor up any aura in your deck that has the same mana cost or less. So it was, anyway, we were gonna mulligan until we found a, a you know, one of our enchantments that um, makes the creature have no abilities and then try to go from there. But uh, it would have been an, it would have been a tough uphill battle for sure. I don't know why they scooped. I don't feel like I was taking too long, but uh I can't I can't imagine Geist of St. Traff made them scoop. Like it it costs three mana, so it's already a turn behind their commander. And then their commander gets to tutor anything they want. Okay, Winota? Very powerful Boros deck. Uh, we do have a blue source. We can counter Winota. <sighs> yeah, I guess we keep. Countering Winota is a strategy. 
Oh, we got an island. Okay. Yeah, make a treasure. So they're going to have Winota next turn. Okay. Hopefully they just scoop to that. <laughs> nope, they're gonna tough it out. Good for them. Let's see some pyromancer. What does that do again? Create some one ones, right? Oh, they get to discard draw. All right, so one, two, three, four, right? So they still are two lands away. Um, I feel like Amiria's Call is gonna be more relevant than Seagate because this could make us some blockers and make our stuff indestructible. Um, we can make our creature have flying. So next turn we take three, four, five, six damage. But we can do six damage this turn. And have spell pierce up. Alright. I think we, well, I think we just do it like this. I think we gotta race them. They're doing six, we're doing eight. blocker now. Very cool. Comes into play tapped. Next turn they're going to have a ton of stuff, huh? Well, that's assuming they have a land. Oh, why did I do that? Oh no, yeah, never mind, never mind. Never mind. I I uh I'm so used to copy spells that don't have the legendary clause. So they're just gonna take it. Lightning bolt my face. Okay. Winona, yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I just have to block the biggest thing. Which I. This has indestructible. So. Because, hold on. We don't have anything to pump in our hand, which is just so unfortunate. Um, don't want to put that in the graveyard. They attacked with everything, right? So if we just attack with both of these, they're dead? They have no mana left. Uh, 
Oh no, they do. They have two treasures. Do they have lightning bolt? Am I am I gonna die to shock here? Nope. <laughs> I think that's GG. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, that was so close. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Whew. So we would have made two 4-4 four, four angels because they could block uh, Geist here, but it would have been 12 damage and they would have died. Man, I never went against Winota, so you know this deck is solid if it can win against Winota. But yeah, I mean, the hexproof ability is is just so good. Um, interesting. It it kind of messes with fairy too. Uh, put target non-land permanent on. Yeah, so it, then minus three has to target. Now they could target one of our auras and enchantments, but they can't target the geist. We can tails into fairy as well. So. One, two, three, Curious Obsession, draws us cards, yeah, I think we keep. Gives it double strike, I think we keep. Do they get to go first? Yeah. So, oh, oh the perfect card. <laughs> okay, well at least our commander can't be countered, but other stuff we, other stuff we play can be countered. Search for his content. Okay. Um, blue. Resolve. See if they just play draw go. Resolve. They do not. Okay. Um, okay, so they have to ferry next turn. But if they play to fairy, we can just attack it down. Now they may have a board wipe. They are Azorius control. But um, I think they're just going to slam to fairy, right? No? They're looking for an answer. They don't have an answer yet. Okay. Would you like to counter that? That's all. Okay, what's the back side of this? Okay, we'll just play the equipment. We should have kept Tails End up. That would have been better than playing the equipment. I forgot we had that. But, um, it's not, like, from their perspective, it's not really great if they just play Teferi because they have nothing to block. They have nothing to block my Geist, so I can just attack it down. Okay, so they can, they can make a blocker here. No matter the time or place, I'm ready to win. But we can Swords it. I've got eyes everywhere. Okay, so now we attach it. We send. We. Tapped in attacking. So I think we have to attack to fairy. Because I don't think we can change. Oh no, we can. Okay. I wasn't sure that the angel. We could choose where it attacks. the battle, not the war. Um. End turn. Resolve. So if they have a board wipe, we have a negate. If they play Teferia, we have Tails End. That's fine.
put a stop here. If they do nothing, we'll uh, make a 1-1 one -one so that we have lethal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, gotta love it. I always lose against a fairy too, so. Negating their cleansing Nova was a uh, chef's kiss. So good. Claim. Let's do a end of video pack opening. Why not? Anything good? Nope. I mean, I think that's alright, but I already have it. Uh, what's this? Legendary creature, skeleton horror, vigilance, menace, descend eight, pay six mana, return it from the graveyard to the battlefield with the finality counter on it. Activate only if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard. Interesting. I don't, yeah, that's more of a standard card than a commander, unless I'm missing something. Not a lot to build around there, but okay. Anyway, deck review. So, Guys of St. Traff, one of the better uh, Voltron commanders because it it has Hexproof. Um, and then, of course, it makes that 4-4. Uh, so, every time it attacks, it's doing 6 damage if you can make sure Geist gets through. The Flyer usually has no problem getting through, but it's you have to you know, give guys, uh, flying or unblockable or, you know, so something along those lines. Um, but if you can, it's incredibly powerful. And then if you can buff it at all, like in the last game, I think it was, we only buffed it by two it was plus two plus O oh, it is now eight power total, uh, every turn. So you're, you're basically attacking your opponents with, a a 6-6 six, six hexproof <laughs> every turn that they can't they can't figure out and then even when they do like with Teferi they like churn through their deck to get the perfect answer you know you come up with the negate right um, so yeah that's the deck not a lot to dissect I think uh, you know some of these cards could be switched in and out um, like, there's some other creatures in here that I thought might be, like, good as, like, backups. But I think, honestly, I would just take out every other creature in this deck. Uh, unless it's, like, this one that has the backside that gives, uh, you know, has the equipment or the, the double strike claws. But, um, you know, or, or this one that, were, that uh, search, you know, tutors for an aura. But, like, in general, if it's just a creature that has, like, no no benefit to geist specifically i would take it out and just add in more ores and enchant and uh, uh equipments because the the sooner you can equip all this stuff to geist and get it gigantic the faster you're gonna win that's really it um if you really want to like beat your opponent's face in before they have an opportunity to dig through their deck for the answer because the answers are so slim right a lot of decks will have one card that will deal with this, but they got to find it in their, you know, 99. So, anyway, that's the deck. If you like the video, hit subscribe. Let me know if there's any cards I missed in here that you think should be auto-includes. Um, leave a comment down below. Like the video. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.